Biodiversity Conservation Why should we conserve biodiversity? The reasons to conserve biodiversity can be grouped into three categories. They are A. Narrowly utilitarian B. Broadly utilitarian and C. Ethical Narrowly utilitarian reasons The narrowly utilitarian arguments for conserving biodiversity are obvious. Humans derive countless direct economic benefits from nature. They are food, fiber, firewood, construction material, industrial products, and products of medicinal importance. More than 25% of the drugs currently sold in the market worldwide are derived from plants, and 25,000 species of plants contribute to the traditional medicines used by native people around the world. In the present condition, how many more medicinal plants had to explore in tropical plants? With increasing resources put into bioprospecting, nations with rich biodiversity can expect to reap enormous benefits. Broad Utilitarian This argument says that biodiversity plays a major role in many ecosystem services that nature provides. Example A. Oxygen supply The Amazon forest is estimated to produce 20% of the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere through photosynthesis. B. Pollinators' role Pollination is another service in the nature. Ecosystem provides through pollination layer bees, bumblebees, birds, bats. There are other intangible benefits which we derive from nature. Example, the aesthetic pleasures of walking through thick woods, watching spring flowers in full bloom, wake up in a bulbul's song in the morning. We can't put a price tag to the ecosystem services which are playing a vital role in conserving biodiversity. Ethical argument According to this argument, philosophically or spiritually, we need to realize that every species has an intrinsic value, even if it may not be of current or any economic value to us. We have a moral duty to care for their well-being and pass on our biological legacy in good order to future generations. How do we conserve biodiversity? When we conserve and protect the whole ecosystem, its biodiversity at all levels is protected. Example, when we save the forests, tigers are also saved. Biodiversity conservation occurs in two ways. A. In situ conservation and B. Ex situ conservation. In situ conservation. Many nations faced with the conflict between development and conservation find it unrealistic and economically not feasible to conserve all their biological wealth. Invariably, the number of species waiting to be saved from extinction far exceeds the conservation resources available. On a global basis, this problem has been addressed by eminent conservationists. They identified for maximum protection certain biodiversity hotspots, regions with very high levels of species richness and high degree of endemism. Initially, 25 biodiversity hotspots were identified, but subsequently, nine more have been added to the list, bringing the total number of biodiversity hotspots in the world to 34. These hotspots are also regions of accelerated habitat loss. Three of these hotspots, Western Ghats and Sri Lanka, Indo-Burma and Himalaya, cover our country's exceptionally high biodiversity regions. Although all the biodiversity hotspots put together cover less than 2% of the Earth's land area, the number of species they collectively harbor is extremely high and strict protection of these hotspots could 
reduce the ongoing mass extinctions by almost 30 percent. In India, ecologically unique and biodiversity rich regions are legally protected as biosphere reserves, national parks and sanctuaries. India now has 14 biosphere reserves, 90 national parks and 448 wildlife sanctuaries. India has also a history of religious and cultural traditions that emphasize protection of nature. In many cultures, tracts of forests were set aside and all the trees and wildlife were venerated and given total protection. Such sacred grooves are found in Kasi and Jayantia hills in Meghalaya, Aravali hills of Rajasthan, Western Ghat region of Karnataka and Maharashtra, and the Sargat Chand and Bastar areas of Madhya Pradesh. In Meghalaya, the sacred grooves are last refuges for a large number of rare and threatened plants.